I am Isabella Oyer. I work at the Camry Wellcome Trust program as a senior research scientist um, working on the malaria parasite. Um, so what my research involves is um, I look to understand uh, mutations in the malaria parasite. And these mutations allow the parasite to uh, resist drugs, so um, confer resistance to anti-malarial drugs and then help them to escape so that um, the drugs don't kill them. Um, another set of mutations that I try to understand is the stage of the parasite that gets into the red blood cells and causes disease, so the disease that we see like fever and chills. Um, and this stage of the parasite has a set of proteins that allow it to invade red blood cells. On these proteins, there are mutations. And as scientists, we're not entirely sure what those mutations are doing. So part of my work is to understand, do these mutations allow the parasite to escape the host immune system, which fights and uh, protects us from disease? Or do those mutations actually allow the parasite to invade the red blood cells better and cause disease? So those are the two areas that I look at. Um, so one of the challenges is in malaria is finding a malaria vaccine that will work. And those challenges arise because the parasite has a lot of mutations, which is what I've just described um, previously, saying that these mutations cause uh, the parasite to either escape the host immune system. So if these mutations allow the parasite to do that, we need to find a way to understand them so we can produce better vaccines. So for instance, um, one of the lead vaccine candidates at the moment is a protein called RH5 in simplicity. Um, but it's a protein on the stage of the malaria parasite that allows you to invade red blood cells. And it's been shown to be uh, quite important in helping the parasite do this work. Um, so my work looks in Kilifi, which is a malaria endemic population, to understand how many mutations do we see in this protein? Um, and can we then find a way of understanding what they do in the protein? The current vaccine that's um, being rolled out in an implementation trial in, in Western Kenya to see how best to introduce it into the public, like in the children vaccination schedule. Um, one of the limitations is it, it doesn't give you 100% protection. Um, so that's where my work would come in to say, can we find other uh, potential candidates on the malaria parasite that could probably make that vaccine more uh, efficacious? Um, or could we do a, a combination of different uh, candidates so that we can improve uh, how this vaccine would work um, in, in the field? So my work goes, it's, it's very early on in vaccines, so it's understanding the biology of that molecule at, uh, at the molecular level um, to inform what might these mutations be doing. And if we know what they're doing is their way, we can then de design a vaccine to um, encompass all those um, issues that arise from understanding the protein. Yeah. I'd say in, in, in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, in Kenya as well, I think it's very clear that malaria is a public health concern, a big public health concern. Um, it causes a lot of illness in children under five, in pregnant mothers. Um, and generally, being unwell is, is, is not a nice thing. So the work that I do tries to find different vaccine candidates that we can put forward. Um, to make a malaria vaccine. So the, the importance is, I, and I think it's been shown in other diseases, is if you have a vaccine to a particular um, organism that causes disease, a bacteria or a virus, then you can prevent people from getting sick. And we're not able to do that at the moment with malaria. Um, so my work, uh, the, the purpose of my work is to understand the proteins that we could use to inform vaccine design. What's been um, interesting in the field at the moment is um, the emergence of resistance to artemisinin in Southeast Asia. Um, now that's been a great concern because if that spreads globally then we will not have a drug that we can use to protect people or to treat people rather. Um, uh, the other good thing that came out of that is um, a molecular marker which is what we call a, a gene that we know the mutation that confers resistant artemisinin. That's been described. So that's obviously helped the anti-malarial resistance field uh, because it means we can now um, study that gene in populations in Africa and understand do we have the mutations that they've seen in Southeast Asia, in Africa. If we do, that would be a cause for concern. Um, but as it stands in the field, uh, for the studies that have been done here in Kilifi, by myself and others um, in, in other African countries, those mutations have not been identified. So at the moment we're in a good, good place in terms of how the drugs are working in Africa, but it's 
still means that you've, we've got to maintain surveillance and monitoring um, anti-malarial resistance, um, particularly to artemisinin, because it's a very good drug, works, works very well, and if we lose that, then I think it will cause a problem for malaria control. Um, how my work um, Im impacts on translational medicine. Um, so I work primarily in the lab, doing uh, using molecular biology tools to understand uh, mutations, for instance, in drug resistance. Um, with this, we're able to inform uh, national drug policy by saying, are these mutations present in the population? And if they are, then that would inform a change in drug policy. So previously, for instance, we were using sulfadoxin pyrimethamine. Molecular work was done to show the mutations are present in Kenya, and that informed the, the national uh, malaria control program that they need to consider changing the drug that we use. Um, and so currently what I'm doing is maintaining surveillance on, on markers involved in artemisinin resistance um, that will then feed into a policy in the long run as to whether we should be changing drug or not. Yes. So the roles that I play um, in the policy forums to try and um, influence um, decisions that are made around malaria public health um, policy. So for instance, I work quite closely with the National Malaria Control Program. In fact, we're the lab that is doing the molecular work for their drug trials. So uh, recommendation is you have to do uh, drug trials in children, but we need the molecular work to understand whether the drugs are working well or not. And without the molecular work, you can't say that the drugs we're using to treat malaria at the moment are working well. So that's where our role comes in, in terms of understanding these mutations in, the, um, in, in these markers that confer resistance to drugs. Um, the other way, um, I'm involved with the National Malaria Control Program is helping them see the importance of molecular work generally in informing um, uh, primarily drug resistance and its, its utility as a good way of screening the population to understand what's the distribution of these mutations in Kenya. And that might inform where would you target uh, particular drugs in the event that there's uh, drug resistance.